Hello, it's Friday the 18th of August 2017 and to start this morning's show, a little video from yesterday when I took a little trip out to London to have some afternoon tea and a visit to the Royal Albert Hall. Afternoon tea first. Had tea at the Kensington Gore Hotel and as you enter, these little two creatures are there to greet you. A couple of little toads waiting to eat all the flies that are everywhere. There was no flies, honestly. There was no flies. There's the floor. Would you like that in your kitchen, that one? I know someone who can come and lay that down for you. This is the reception. Beautiful old clock there on the right. Some staircases. Uh, that's actually a mirror there. That's not the staircase. There's the staircase at the back there. And reception. Very helpful people in there. Lovely staff from all different countries, as, uh, as is always in a London hotel and coming into the place of tea drinking and eating sandwiches and cakes. I've ordered one of those for the living room. I may need a larger living room. This is just uh, taking you around the room a little bit there. Very comfortable chairs, I have to say. And they've got these butterfly displays uh, behind the bar. There's quite a few of them. I hope that they aren't real butterflies have been sacrificed for us to watch them above the bar there. Mirrors all over the place, some lovely pictures. Get a little bit closer to the pictures in a second. There we go, at the top there. Really well laid out. Very oldy wordy. I think they were expecting a, a busy afternoon, but it was only me and the Chinese family sitting in there. So a bit of a quiet day for them, I suppose. I think that's a tea, tea making machine, not sure. There's some of the stuff they serve the tea in. Now you can't be a lovely cup of tea in the afternoon in a proper cup. Look at this. Yes. It's the tiniest piece of milk. There we go. That's probably a little bit weak for me, but never mind. Thank you. Delicious. I forgot to video my sandwiches, but um, here's the cakes. Yes, they were very nice indeed. <laughs> Quite a lot of cakes. I did forget my Slimming World uh, for the day, or at least for the afternoon. Now, this is the bar area, which is another room opposite from the area where I was having afternoon tea. Really beautiful. All woodwork there. A little bit dark over in the corner there. I did do some videoing around the back there as well, but it was a little bit too dark to see anything, unfortunately. Uh, the Rolling Stones went here to celebrate the launch of their album, I think uh, sometime in the 1970s, and there's a gold disc as well to prove that. Well, it was very nice um, afternoon tea I've had. I had a little sit in the bar, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the pictures that are inside the bar. And uh, over now to the Royal Albert Hall, I might allow myself to have an ice cream today as well, as it was a Mr. Whippy ice cream van. Mmm! And there it is. The very tempting Mr. Whippy ice cream van. I had a tub with a flake in as well. I forgot my sins for the day. Here's the side of the Royal Albert Hall. Something of interest there at the back. Just across the road from the Royal Albert Hall is the Prince Albert Memorial. Uh, Prince Albert was married to uh, Queen Victoria and he died quite young. I think it was uh, pneumonia he died from, but here's a few pictures from around the memorial. Prince Albert apparently did quite a lot for the people. There he is. And um, some nice statues around. And a family that seemed to photobomb me trying to take my pictures. It's outrageous, dear. Get out of the way. There's a Royal Albert Hall from across the road. There's the BBC Proms thing there. And they've got this picture outside that you can stand in and have your photo taken. So I did. Queuing. Look at that queue, dear. Oh, my God. But I got in eventually. This is inside one of the... Uh, front entrances, all sorts of little bits and pieces to buy there. That's where you get collector tickets, you see, just over there. Some lovely pictures you can buy. Um, you walk through there, there's a nice man. Spell your picture now, this yeah, is you ours. Spot the picture. Oh, You've awful. added to it. You've added <laughs> oh, to good. it. <laughs> Inside the Royal Albert Hall now, and I managed to get in my box. Here it is. Nice and empty, no one else here, although uh, people could join us behind or, or next to us there. Never really know how many people are going to be here until, uh, until the show starts. Um, it's filling up down there. As you can see with people and the stage all set. Empty at the moment, waiting 
for our performers. And there's the big organ over there, waiting to be played. And the orchestra arrives. It's very, very naughty to be filming something at one of these things. They really don't like you doing it. However, just a couple of little clips for you here. Oh, there we are. We're back. There we are. A, a, a truly wonderful, wonderful day. And I don't mind telling you that when right at the uh, towards the end of the performance, when that young and he was only young, the bloke playing the organ, you couldn't quite see it. He, he looked like he was about 26 in a Mohican, as you could see. He looked very young to me when he played that bit. Da, 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 da. I started crying. <laughs> I'm very emotional with some of my music. I really am. Uh, but of course, you might recognise that tune. Uh, it was made into a pop song, I think, in the 1970s. Uh, if I had words by Scott Fitz, uh, Scott Scott. Um, Oh gosh, it's Scott Kelly, or is it Scott Fitzcarry or Scott Kelly or Scott Fitzgerald? That's it. Scott S Scott Fitzgerald, uh, who also sung a song at the Eurovision Song Contest many years ago, which came second, called Go. <coughs> and the song they've taken from that is If I Had Words. I mean, look it up on YouTube if you want a little, little bit later on. If I had words to da 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 Da, 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 da. And I think uh, the bloke uh, and lady sitting next to me is always someone uh, you can always find someone to talk to at these events. You know, it doesn't matter if you, you go alone, alone to um, any of these places like when I go alone on holiday. You know, you always find someone to talk to. You don't want to be dragging someone around and they want to do that and you want to do that. Oh, it gets on my nerves. No, go on your own and be done with it. You're never alone, really. There's always, always people that talk to you. There really was. There was a very posh lady who sat next to me and uh, uh, told me that the music was also used in the film Babe. Said, Isn't that about a pig? I can't. I, I don't seem to recall the film, to be honest. I think it's about a pig, but I can't remember anything about it, so I don't know if it was or not. But uh, that was our day yesterday. I have to say it was very, very hot in the uh, Royal Albert Hall itself. I was getting quite hot there, and kind of it, it starts making you doze off, especially when the strings are playing. You know, nice and softly. Uh, there was a lady who sang right at the beginning. And I, d I don't know what it was, whether she didn't have a microphone on or something. We had a real trouble hearing her. And I was speaking to the people around us. And um, they too, it wasn't just me. Everyone seemed to have trouble hearing this lady sing. Um, the acoustics in the Royal Albert Hall are fantastic. I don't know even if they use microphones in there, but certainly for her, they needed a microphone shoved on there somewhere. Uh, and as you saw from the food, we, 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 we came away from the Slimming World for just a few hours yesterday. Just a few hours. That little afternoon period between... Uh, what would it be? <clears throat> between uh, 2 p.m. and... 
5 p.m. were slimmer were slimmers world free. When I had my afternoon tea and I had an ice cream as well. After that ice cream, back on the slimmers world. No, no alcohol. No ice cream in the um in the Royal Albert Hall. Four pound fifty for an ice cream. In the Royal Albert Hall, dear, four fifty. These little things were, and they were only tiny. It's not like you had a great big thing. I only paid two pound fifty for my tub and flake outside, the little 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 van outside. It was a bit odd. This bloke, this bloke served me. Well, there's a queue. There was a little queue of people. He served me and then closed his window and went off somewhere. <laughs> I expect he went to the wee. Thank, thank God I got my ice cream before he went. He had his wee. Great. Uh, so if you've ever been to the, uh, have never been to the Royal Albert Hall, go look up stuff. There's there's so much to see there. They got the Nutcracker on at Christmas. I want to go and see that. You know, da, da, is that the right one? Da, 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 or is that Swan Lake? I always get confused between the two. And there's also something coming up in November, classical spectacular. <clears throat> now, if you go to that one, you'll know all the tunes: Land of Hope and Glory, Rule Britannia, Jerusalem, that. Seafaring one, da 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 and things like 1812 Overture, lasers, lights, music, what more could you want? And that's in November. I've been to that before. I might go again this year. And that really is a great, great night out. Get your tickets early, though, because they go. All right, let's go to some of your messages this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. Diane's there. Morning, Diane. Ray Reynolds is here. Good morning, Ray. Christina. Good morning, Christina. I have just enough time to get a coffee. Have a cup of coffee, dear. Or have a cup of tea. Tea is so much better for you. It really is. Morning, the lovely Shania on the Isle of Wight. Stella Andrews is there this morning. Good morning, Stella. Uh, she's having a little operation at the moment. And sends through a message. She says, uh, on the subject of... Um, let, me have, let me have a look there. Of... Uh, Wednesday's emergency broadcast, because we did two emergency broadcasts on Wednesday, didn't we? Uh, which, incidentally, that second elect... I can't believe it. That's um, You know I'm not led by numbers. But that second emergency broadcast has now had 1,200 views. That's the most I've ever had. Is that what I need to do? Put up emergency broadcasts at the beginning... <laughs> at the beginning of the videos to make people watch them. They're, oh, oh, they're so frightened of losing out, aren't they, some people? Not you, regular viewers... Other people, you know, the others, who we don't usually talk about, do we? Others. Not not regulars like yourselves, the others. They've seen something. Emergency. Oh, 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 I might be missing out here. They, they got F-O-L-O. -O, fear of losing out. You know those people. Yeah, I bet you know some of those people. Fear of losing out. Whenever you're doing something, oh, oh, what, oh, what was that about? Oh, what was that about? Oh, you're going somewhere. Oh, well, why didn't you ask me to go? They're so frightened of losing out on something all the time, aren't they? That's what we've got. That's the people that watch the emergency broadcast, I reckon. Uh, Stella says, hi, just saw your emergency broadcast. How dare you be so gay? And why are you driving a left-hand car? No, it's not left-hand. It's not left-hand. When you use... An iPhone, okay? If you use that, that's okay. But if you use that side to broadcast on Facebook Live, it switches the picture around. We don't know why it does this. Um, it, it must be something to do with the software. I would imagine now they would have been able to sort it out if they wanted to. I can only assume that they don't want to. So when you do it like that way, so that way, you produce a mirror image rather than the image the correct way round. So that's why that is. So you're probably thinking, why don't you do it that way? Because then I don't know that, that it's working. And that's why. That's why I do it that way when I'm using uh, the iPhone, OK? Um, <clears throat> where are we now? Uh, Stella's having an operation uh, today, uh, if you want to give me a shout. So good morning to you, Stella. Have you had your operation yet, dear? What are you having removed? Are you having something inserted? Or removed. I prefer things to be inserted. It's been a few years now. But uh, yes, also I'm having an operation today. If you want to give me a shout, I'll make sure the nurses keep quiet while you're broadcasting. Well, invite them into the show, dear. Let them join in. That's what you've got to do. Don't have them sitting there wondering. I bet they're all over there now by your hospital bed. Oh, what's going on? They've got it, haven't they? Fear of losing out. That should be a registered disability, I think. Fear of losing out. Can you claim money for that one, dear? I'll have a word with Theresa May, see if we can get a form out for that, okay? 
Um, Stella's going to have ice cream when she wakes up. Oh, yes, please. Oh, I'm very normal, uh, uh, normal with ice cream. I don't know. Is that normal? Boring with ice cream. Vanilla. That's it. Vanilla. My favourite ice cream is Mr. Whippy. I did look in to get a Mr. Whippy ice cream machine. About three grand, five thousand pounds. Oh dear! Mind you, if I I could sell them outside the house, couldn't I? When I I need to open my gardens to the public. I've got one of those sort of gardens now. It's not pristine and all cut perfectly. I mean, some people have been out sad, have they? They get their little rulers out and they, they, they got they're out there with nail scissors. <clears throat> oh, oh, that piece of grass is 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 too is 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 a quarter of an inch too long. Snip! Ah, there, that's better. And they're like that. They're like, like, like trying to see their grass. Like, you know, is that correct? You know, with 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 measuring things and all that. It's not like that. Mine is a little bit more. How would you say? Um, random, random. I keep the the lawn. Uh, you know, I, I I mow it usually twice a week at this time of year actually. But the flowers, I if I see a gap, I put a plant in. It's not like one there and one there, one there and one there. And it's not all perfect like that. But I, I do feel I could open my gardens now to the public and charge a fee. While at the same time having a Mr. Whippy ice cream machine installed and serving those up as well. What do you reckon on that? What can we charge? Well, I'm, I don't want to be greedy. I think £1.20 for a large Mr. Whippy ice cream. We're not doing these at like £2.50. £4.50 in the Royal Albert Hall for an ice cream, dear. How much is it in your hospital? Can you buy ice creams in the hospital? Ray enjoyed the video this morning. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Uh, on the subject of videos, yes, we couldn't get um, Facebook Live to work yesterday morning, so we did use the YouTube thing. The only thing is, if I go... And someone sent me a little message. Please, in future, do live YouTube instead of live Facebook because it's better. Um, the only thing is he didn't say why it was better. And the other thing is, if I go live on YouTube, you don't get, I know some of you have got like a, you've hit a subscribe button of some sort. I don't, don't even know what I'm talking about, to be honest, but there's a subscribe button somewhere on what you're watching now, I think. And if you haven't subscribed, it's there. If you click it, then every time I go on Facebook Live, you get a, a, a bleep or a notification on your phone and it tells you there's a show. I'm sure you've, you've probably done that. Well, if I do it on YouTube, you don't get that notification. Yes, it's on there, but you could be, I mean, you could be in the toilet. You know, you could be in a public convenience and, you know, getting on with your business. And when you come out of that public convenience, it could all be over and done with. Oh, I didn't get a notification. Whereas if you're in a cubicle somewhere in the world, you know, and I start doing a show, uh, beep, beep, ah, oh, you can just whip your coat, whip, whip your phone out of your, um, out of your pocket, put it carefully on your lap while you're doing your business and start watching and you don't miss anything. Although it does always go up as a recording answer. So that's the only drawback we're going on YouTube. If you sign up to YouTube and subscribe to it that way, then you get an email, but it's a bit long winded, to be honest. And you don't get that instant notification that you do on Facebook Live. So that's why we we'll probably stick with this. But the chat did say uh, Facebook Live is better. Uh, YouTube Live is better. I wonder why. Uh, why did you say that? I mean, what is the reason for that, please? I I'd love to know. OK, uh, good morning, Tony Power. Who says, I remember Scott is a great friend of mine, uh, Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, really? OK. I uh, was just going to mention the song. Oh, it was a wonderful song. That was a... And I, we were pipped at the post. If I remember rightly, Tony, when Scott Fitzgerald did um, go, go before you break my heart once more. It's for, it's what I'm waiting for. It's that one, isn't it? I do, do you know, that's not on my karaoke system, that one. I haven't found that on the, on, on the karaoke thing because I'd like to sing that. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's a lovely song. That is. We were pipped at the post, weren't we? We were leading almost all the way through from a very early age. And right at the very end, someone else won it. Was, was it Norway who won it? Who suddenly got it at the last moment? I can't remember now. Yes, I'm sure it was someone like that. Uh, good morning to lovely Ashley. Morning, Ashley. Who says, are you having trouble clear hearing, Chris? Didn't you take your hearing aid? No, can I borrow yours, love? Can I borrow your ear and aids? <laughs> My mate's got ear and aids, and when he moves them a certain way, they whistle, and I always find that rather amusing for some reason. <laughs> and I've I've worked out my mate. If I put my hat, if he's got his ear and aid in, he doesn't always have it in. If he's got his ear and aid in, and I do that, it goes, it whistles, and he goes, he goes, he gets mad. <laughs> 
or we are repaired here. <laughs> when we're out, you should invite us round for dinner. We will create mayhem in your homes. Hmm. Uh, Tony says, glad you had a great day, Chris. Uh, it is naughty feeling at the... They really don't like you filming. I mean... I have to say, even myself, you know, if I saw someone sitting there, you know, for the whole performance filming it, I'd, I'd be rather angry. What what I do, what I do is is I turn the script because the other thing is, what uh, perhaps something you haven't thought about. So you're watching a show, okay, and you know they they dim the light. It's not pitch black. Well, they dim the lights. If someone suddenly got a phone down the front or somewhere, then you get that. Um, White light distracting you from watching the show. So that's probably uh, the main... I would imagine that's the main reason uh, that they do it. That and copyright issues. Although, of course, you know, if you're just doing a little little clips here and there, like I do at the Barry Manilow concerts. Now, they don't... Uh, they, they say, do not video the show. OK? And the reason is, you know, someone's going to watch or listen to your recording rather than buy, buy the album or something. But if you're doing little clips, no one's going to sort of see a 5, 10, 20 second clip and um, substitute that for actually purchasing the album or something like that, are they? In fact, I would say that seeing a little clip of a performance like that, I think, oh, I really like that. I'll buy the album. Album. I think you're helping to, to do it. So, you know, try and get a little clip here and there. I, I, I don't think they're too bothered about that. And what I do is I turn the screen right down. So it's, it's I mean, you, can, you can't see it really. I mean, I can't even see it. So no one else would be able to see it. And I just hold it there a little bit like that. You know, just for like 15, 20 seconds, just to get you a little feel of it and um, uh, to see how wonderful it was there. All right, Tony. So you're quite right. They they really don't like you filming things at these events. Although, it, uh, you know, when you go to a Justin Bieber concert, you know, are you filming the music or his gorgeous body? That's a thing. That's who we need in the studio. Justin Bieber. You wouldn't get out of here. I'm telling you that alive. Uh, I have been caught a few times. Have you really filming at events? What did you what did you go to, Tony? And what happened? Do they simply say, I'm sorry, stop doing that? Is, is that is that like the be all and end all of it? I mean, once they've told you not to do it anymore, then you can't get your camera out again after that. I mean, that really is taking a mick, isn't it? Uh, I have to be a bit daring. I'm very, very daring. Good morning to lovely Craig Hards. Good morning. Who's got a day off work? Uh, I see you had a wonderful time at Brighton. Didn't you, Craig? I was looking at some of your pictures there. You really, you two really are suited to each other. You make a lovely couple, you two. You really do. <coughs> Ray says, glad to see the Thames logo is back on the wall behind us. Uh, now, Ray met Tom Edwards. Who's Tom Edwards? You're wondering who Tom Edwards was, aren't you? He was one of the blokes who was, I think they were, were they all men? No, no, there were ladies later on, wasn't there? There was ladies. Oh, what's this for? What's the, what the hell's that? Oh, I know what that is. That's my um, carbon monoxide alarm, which I have near my boiler. And I don't know if you've got smoke alarms in your house. I've got smoke alarm every room and this carbon monoxide alarm in the boiler. And a smoke alarm, there's one in here. And they're all battery operated, of course. Now and again, when the battery starts failing, it starts bleeping. I've also got one in the loft. And it usually happens at three o'clock in the morning when you're in bed. And you get you wake up a little Whoa, what was that? And you're just drifting off. And then very faintly, beep. Ah, oh, and you realise one of the smoke alarm batteries is failing. I'll ignore it. You know, and beep. Oh, like that. And you cannot get to sleep. And at three o'clock in the morning, and I've done this several times now, you literally, of course, the, the, the easiest answer is to remove all the batteries at that point. But no, you don't do that. You've got it in your head that you must find the smoke alarm that's failing. And it can take you 20 minutes to, to stand in, in lots of different areas of the house, waiting for that smoke alarm to bleep again so you can whip the battery back out and go to bed. It's worse when it's in the loft. I've had it gone off in a loft like that. Beep. And you've got to get the ladder out four o'clock in the morning up into the loft just to remove the batteries from the damn smoke alarm. Of course, it would be better to just purchase, I don't know, 10, 10 new batteries every year and change them all over at the same time. Has that ever happened to you? 
and you can't get to sleep. Even And that beep, especially if it's downstairs in the kitchen, it's so faint you can barely hear it. But you can at four o'clock in the morning when there's no other noise around. Yes. Anyway, uh, back to Ray Reynolds' uh, <coughs> uh, comment now. Yeah, Tom Edwards was one of the blokes that was in between the programmes on Thames Television. Now, there's lots of younger people watching the show as well. You watch Thames Television. OK, Thames Television was the ITV station in London. ITV used to be split up into 15, I think, 15 separate television companies that all made their own programmes. But generally, most of the time were all joined together. Um, playing the same programmes out. And Thames Television was one of the contractors for London from the 1960s. Before that, it was Rediffusion and also ATV as well, believe it or not. Yeah, ATV was one of the London contractors. Uh, I think it was the first London contractor. I might be wrong with that. Either the first or second. It was at Rediffusion and ATV or ATV then Rediffusion. I'm not, I'm not quite sure where, what position in time those two were. Um... And then Thames took it over and Tom Edwards was one of the people uh, later on, I think, in the 19, late 1970s, early 80s, I think, Tom Edwards was one of the people who was in between the programmes. Because the programme would finish and then a bloke would come on, in this case Tom Edwards, and say, oh, very good morning to you, and um, welcome to Thames Television on this Wednesday afternoon at 9.30. We'll have our schools and... Uh, 9.30 was the time ITV started. There were none of this overnight stuff. It would start at 9.30 in the morning and each television station throughout the country had its own little bit of fanfare, music type thing. The Thames one was fantastic. Oh, God, it was fantastic. And it's on YouTube. If you type in Thames Startup, Thames Startup, you'll get the full... There's actually two pieces of music. You'll get the four pieces of music and they are wonderful pieces. Would you want to hear it? Shall I play it for you? Because that won't be copyright, that one, will it? That'll be out of copyright. So I, I think I can play that for you, actually. One minute. <clears throat> it's a wonderful piece of music. It's about um, it's about two minutes long, OK? So just to warn you. Where are we? Now, this is a very powerful piece of music. Are you ready? So here we go. This is Thames Television. Operating on the London area transmitters of the Independent Broadcasting Authority. What a wonderful, wonderful piece of music. And that would come on just before, around about 27 minutes past nine, before the programme started, you see. And, it's like, and, then, and then Tom Edwards would come on and he'd be there and he'd look straight at you and say, a very good morning to you and welcome to Thames Television on this Friday, the 18th of August, 2017, where in just a few minutes' time, it'd be programmes for schools and colleges. That was what Tom Edwards did. It was also a, a, a radio DJ as well. Uh, Ray says, I spoke to Tom Edwards on Monday at Harridge for the Pirate BBC Essex broadcast. He was a Thames continuity announcer, as well as Pontins Blue Coat at Pakefield Lowestoft. Oh, Pontins. 
Oh, what well, wonderful, wonderful holidays we had in the 70s at Pontins uh, and DJ with Radio City and Radio Caroline. So thank you for that, Ray. How wonderful to meet someone like that. That's great, isn't it? Tony says, I think it was Celine Dion that won that year. Was it, was it really at the Eurovision? When, no, I don't know. Was it when Scott Fitzgerald lost? Check it out, Tony. Can you check it out for you? Tony says, I've been caught filming at shows that I've been asked by the artists involved to film. Uh, it's just the event staff that are not aware that you're allowed to do it. Yes, <clears throat> I think so. And actually, I have to say, at the last Barry Manilow concert, I think they've become a lot softer on people filming, to be honest. I didn't see anyone stopped. And there's so many people doing it. And, you know, when, when, when the old smartphones first came out, there might be one or two people. And it was easy. He, I, and I watched it myself, you know, security codes come out. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry, you can't do any filming. And that would be like the be all, all and end of it. But of course, you know, at that time, people would then say, oh, sorry. And they put their camera around and there'd be no more of it. Now, people row with them. It's my right to do and all this. Oh, one of those people, dear. You know, oh, I've got this. I've paid for my ticket. It's a bit like that. You know, they, they make up their own rules, don't they? They just want to do as they want and sod everyone else, which is a great shame. But there we go. All right. Um, so we had a bit of rain last night. I think it was woken up about five, six o'clock in the morning by a lot of rain coming down, which is good. I need my water butts filled up. Uh, it's a beautiful summer's day out there. When I finished uh, chatting to you, I should be walking up to the swimming pool. I noticed my paperwork is building up again. Oh, dear. It's another another few hours of paperwork there. Well, I don't keep on top. Well, I do keep on top of it because once I notice a little pole building up, I quickly get on with it. You know, start printing off um, uh, uh, receipts for stuff that I've ordered, perhaps. Because that's the thing, as a self-employed person, you've got to do your own. Well, I don't, I do do my own accounts. So I then send them to the accountant, uh, which he charges me an arm and a leg to sort them all out. And then he tells me how much tax I've got to pay and all that. And besides, I think the tax authorities, they like to see that an accountant has looked over all your stuff as well. It's like probably saves them a lot of work as well. I don't know. Um, it'll charge me an arm and a leg for that. But but I, I, I do I do have to put my invoices and receipts, anything I buy, you see, I put that through to tax people. Anything I buy that's anything to do with a job like like petrol, like petrol, like a car, you know, like a like a microphone, anything like that, then I put it through. And really, you need to keep on top of these sort of things, because if you don't, you lose the money. You know, if I was to spend <clears throat> £200 on a microphone and I didn't put that through, then I would be sending the tax man £200 that I didn't have to send him. Do you get it? And that's that's kind of how it works like that. So very, very important to keep uh, on top of all your uh, paperwork and all that. I've got a new gadget. As I came in last night, came in the front door. Oh, I've put my train picture on the wall downstairs, which is looking very nice. And bees have arrived. Now you're thinking, oh, what's he mean by bees? Little wooden bees have arrived. I've got... On my double glazed door thing, which has, of course, got a plastic frame there, there's some holes in there where there used to be a doorbell. And I don't, I mean, you can't really fix that. So I've got some little stick on bees. I have had bees on there before, but they fell off. So I ordered some new stick on bees and they're all on the front door. I'll do a picture of it and show it to you uh, at some point, OK? Um, as I was coming back, uh, parked my car, and as I was coming back to the house, my neighbours, uh, the lovely David, and uh, Karen will come. I said, oh, well, you've been out as well. And they'd just been out to dinner. I said, well, I'm just back from the Royal Albert Hall. And I, and Dave said to me, oh, that's something I've never done. I can't believe that, uh, that my neighbour has never been to the Royal Albert Hall. Because that would be his sort of thing. He's a lovely child. I couldn't wish for um, better neighbours, to be honest. I've got fantastic neighbours. And if, you know, if, 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 I, I have to say, if I... If they ever knocked at my door and says, oh, oh, you're making a bit too noise, too noise. I would be horrified at that. It's never happened in all the 25, what is it, 25 years I've been here now. It's never happened. They've never had to knock at the door and say I'm making too much noise, which I'm very pleased at. If they had, if, they, if that ever happens, I would be horrified to think that I'd intruded on someone else's life. It really would. But you see so many people and they just don't care, do they? They don't care. They don't care that that bush 
that they've got in their garden is now affecting their neighbour's light and they refuse to cut it down. Or it's my house, I do what I like and up goes the music. It's just awful people. And if you live next to one of those, I'm sure some of you do, or even worse, upstairs. I mean, can you just imagine having a noisy neighbour upstairs banging around at night and all that? And other nighttime noises. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, people just don't care anymore, do they? I came across this story. Um, it, it, I looked it up this morning because I was watching Panorama. Dun, I love that music, don't you? Dun, 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 dun about drunk passengers on aeroplanes. Did you see that? I think it was on Monday or Tuesday night and I'd recorded it. And it's just horrendous the the way some people act. Okay, and 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 the fact oh I'm sorry I was drunk. That's not an excuse. Shouldn't have got bloody drunk in the first place. How can they be letting drunk people and they're really drunk on planes? And there were people, there was one bloke weeing, standing up in the airport lounge and weeing on the carpet. Not not even hidden in a corner where he might not get, he literally stood up from his, from his um, uh, horrible, horribly uncomfortable plastic seat and weed on the carpet in front of everyone. Disgusting people. Disgusting people. And there they all were on the plane. There was a you know group of a group, lads. I know, I know I know lads are rowdy and all that and young people are rowdy, but for God's sake, on a plane, are you serious? Do you know how dangerous that is? They soon shut up if the plane started diving towards them. That's what they should do, you know. That's what these uh, pilots should do. When they get any trouble like that, you get too much trouble, just start the plane diving into free fall. <laughs> Let's see who's laughing then, then, kids. <laughs> but there were people, they were being sick all over the plane, um, shouting. There were fights on the plane, proper fights. Not just a little slap here and there, like, like someone did at one of the pubs last week. <laughs> that was quite funny. Oh, dear. and then so someone else went round and said there was had been a massive brawl in there. There was no massive fight. One person got a slap. But these were proper fighting on the plane. Punches flying like people holding their heads and like that. Oh, for God's sake, man. Just awful. Um, and spitting. Dirty, dirty people. Spitting at airline crew because they couldn't get their own way. And these people should be dragged off that plane and never be allowed to fly again. Of course, because you've got young families on there, you know, with little children who are watching all this. They think it's perfectly acceptable. They go, oh, oh, well, we'll do that as well. And it's just awful. So uh, if you get a chance, watch that one on the iPlayer, OK? Panorama, uh, drunk on a plane or something like that. It was on this week. Um, on the BBC website, it says arrests of passengers suspected of being drunk at UK airports and on flights has risen by 50% in a year. In a year. Why are people so drunk? It never used to be like that. But is that not just society in general now? Whereas everyone is just out for themselves and don't care about anyone else? This is one of the things I, I, I keep saying this to my mate Ron. I say, you know, it, 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 it it's a good good reason to just sell up, move out, some buy a little place somewhere where you're surrounded by an acre of your own land and you've never got to talk to anyone again. Because it's getting worse and worse and worse, in particular in London, in clubs. There was a particular place I worked at, and I don't know why, but in this one they were they were particularly rude most of the time. I've left, I left there a few weeks ago, but for some reason the customers were the worst customers. They, they all think they're like, they're owed something. <clears throat> I don't know what all that's about. Um, the arrest figures obtained by Panorama came from 18 out of the 20 police forces uh, with a major airport in their area. Uh, it's terrible. A total of 19,000 of the Unite Union's cabin crew members were surveyed and 4,000 responded, with one in five saying they had suffered physical abuse. A former cabin, this is on the BBC News site, uh, a former cabin crew 
uh, manager with Virgin quit her job last October after 14 years and told Panorama, people just see us as barmaids in the sky. And of course, you don't realise those cabin crew, they're not just serving you tea and coffee and bringing up a sausage sandwich. If that plane gets in trouble, they are the ones who are going to save your lives and tell you what to do. Treat them with some respect. In July uh, last year, the aviation industry introduced a voluntary code of conduct on disruptive passengers, which most of the big airlines and airports signed up to. The code's advice includes asking retailers to warn passengers not to consume duty free. They're not going to listen to that, are they? Who's going to listen to that? Don't bloody well sell it to them. Or sell it to them. And then they can, when you come back through the airport on your way home, come and pick it up from reception or whatever it is from the shop. <clears throat> or it'll be available as you come off the plane. It can't be that difficult to do that. They shouldn't be allowed to buy drink and take it on the plane with them. It's ridiculous. It says here, entering an aircraft when drunk or being drunk on an aircraft is a criminal offence with a maximum sentence of two years imprisonment. Well, I mean, I have to say, why are they being let on the plane? It must be pretty obvious, those that are really comatosed. It must be. I don't understand it and, and, and why it just seems to get worse and worse, doesn't it? But uh, there's another excuse for you. You know, I'm, I'm on a mission here to get everyone to stay in the UK for their holidays. As you well know. Eh? And there's another excuse not to go anywhere. Uh, Christina says it reminded me of a Thomas Cook flight. Did, did you did you um, uh, did you go on a Thomas Cook flight and experience something like that, Christina? And it awful. And it, it's just horrible. It really is. Uh, Tony Power uh, says it was Celine. Ne partez pas ça, moi. Did you notice how I slipped into French then, boys and girls? Not someone French, French. Uh, did you notice that? I slipped into French then. I can do all the languages. Uh, all the languages. French today. French today. Uh, one with 137 points. That was the Eurovision Song Contest that Scott's, uh, Fitzgerald, Scott Fitzgerald lost, unfortunately. He got 136 points. Uh, was only one point away from winning. And third was Finland. Yes, it it was that year. And Scott Fitzgerald was, was, was winning right the way through. And right at the very end, it changed positions with um, Celine Dion. But there you go. It's one of those things. Uh, have to be some winners and some losers, doesn't it? Now, here's a little um, thing in the sun this morning. The sun's super... So oh, hang on a minute. I haven't showed you that. I'm, I'm, I'm splitting up stories here. So Dave and Karen came through, uh, my, my, my lovely neighbours, and he said to me he's never been to the Royal Albert Hall, so I recommended him that he goes to the classical spectacular concert that I told you about at the beginning of today's programme, uh, which is in November. And if you go to that, you will know all the tunes. And uh, he said, what's in that big box? Because I just the postman left me a nice big box this morning. I got new gadgets. Got a new gadget. Now, I don't have the gadget with me. I've just got the box. Look at this. Oh, yes. The Tower Health Fry Low Fat Air Fryer. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Now, this, I saw one of the lovely girls on Slimmer's World had bought one of these. And a couple of weeks ago, it was on special offer. Usual price, £99. Price on Amazon wasn't 99 not 90, not 80, not 70, 60, 50, not 45, 40, 35 pounds. Nope, not 34, 33, 32 pounds. I won't even take 31 pounds off you. Not even 30 pounds. Give me 29 pounds and 99 pence and one of those is yours. So I bought one and there it is. My Tower Health Fry. Okay, so it's basically a, a convection oven. It's got a fan in it and it spreads the heat around. Now, I do have a fan oven. So you're thinking, well, why has he bought that if he's got a fan oven? Well, the fan oven is large. You know, it's a big oven. There's only me. And you've got to put that whole oven on for like one baked potato, which is a blooming waste of electricity. It also takes quite a while. So I've bought that in the thinking in my own mind that, number one, it will be quicker. And number two, it won't use as much electricity. And number three, I think you can do chips in there. Um, it certainly, it's got, 
See, it's got chips on the bottom there. Okay? Now, the thing is, it comes with these two instruction books. Airwave Low Fat Fryer. As I say, it cost me £30 off Amazon, this thing. I can't see this. Just a minute. And it says quick tips how to cook things here. Casserole, roast potatoes, baked potatoes. It says you can make microwave potatoes first for 15 minutes, then finish them off for 20 minutes on the bottom rack of your tower airwave low-fat fryer, or you can bake the whole thing in there. Which, so so that, should be, um, that should certainly be quicker. And then it's all various different meat dishes. You can do casserole. Place your casserole dish on the low rack and cover with a lid. Cook for half the time given in your recipe. Mind you, I've got a slow cooker to do that. So really, I've only <laughs> got this to do chips. It's the only reason I've got it. And yet, there is no mention of chips anywhere in the bloody book. So it's going to be a bit of um, hit and miss, I think. What I think I'll do, I'll do it the same as my Slimmer's World chips. And I'll, um, because it comes with a couple of uh, uh, rack things and like a, like a, like a basket thing. I think I'll lay my my cut up potato in there, sprayed with the fat uh, fat spray. Oh, what's that? Low fat spray, low cow fat spray spray light spray fry light fry light. Uh, I'll spray them with fry light. Put them in there and put them on for about forty minutes and see how that goes. Uh, it's all glass, so you can see exactly what's going on inside it. So has anyone got one of those? A tower fat free fire looks wonderful to me. It really does. Good morning to uh, John. Good morning, John, who says the Albert Hall is stunning. Been there many times. Glad you had a good time. Oh, wonderful. It was just such a wonderful night that was. The whole day was lovely yesterday and it went so quickly. Now, usually I have a couple of hours sleep in the afternoon. Now, get this. Usually around about sometime between sort of 3 and 7 p.m. I'll have a couple of hours uh, between there somewhere. Yesterday, I didn't have that sleep because I was you know, doing stuff. And um, and yet I wasn't tired. Isn't that strange? Usually I would have got tired by then. Must say thank you, by the way, to those of you who are sharing the um, uh, today's show on your walls. That is always greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for that. OK, uh, Christina says, what time is dinner? Add some cheese. to your No cheese. No, Christina. Cheese, dear. Slimmers. What? Don't let my slimmers. Wild girls. Are you hear you mention that word cheese? God's sake, woman, have you gone mad? Jeez? Jeez? No. <laughs> you can have quark fat-free cheese only. Nothing else. Not allowed. My God. If Linda from Slimming World heard me eat cheese, she would be round here like a, like a, like a shot deer, dragging me out of the house and beating me in the street in front of the other Slimmers World people. Yes. As punishment. Right, now where were we? What were we going to now? I can't remember. Oh, there we are. Uh, a little story in... It is a sin. It is a sin. Uh, a little story uh, in the sun this morning. Poor old Prince William. Ha <laughs> ha! The Prince of Wales and Duke of Cambridge knock back a dram of whiskey at the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. Wonderful. Before the performance, Charles and William spent some time speaking with performers and posed for a group shot. William... Wore black tie with sub submarine dolphins. What? What's that? Submarine dolphins. What the hell's that? And diamond jubilee medals. L earlier in the evening, Charles wore a dashing grey. It tells you what they were wearing. Um, where is it now? It's the first time they've attended the annual event. And there's a picture of them both having a little dram of whiskey. Now, I don't know about you. I do not know how people... Drink whiskey. I mean, it's the most disgusting taste ever. It really is. In fact, uh, a lot of the alcohol um, I don't like. I, I don't like alcohol at all, really. I might have a little glass of champagne or Prosecco. I I mean, we're talking one every two years, something like that. But I, ge I generally don't like the taste of alcohol at all. And uh, Prince William, there's a picture of him there. Uh, Charles and him are having a little bit of whiskey and he, his face is like that. He obviously didn't like it. <laughs> so have a little look at that in the in the sun this morning, boys and girls, OK? That's a picture in the sun this morning. Rightio, let's do uh, today's birthdays. Just to let you know, we've got karaoke tonight. Um, karaoke this morning, uh, tonight, uh, every Friday night, is at Central Station. 
That's in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8.30. Is it, is it Friday today? Yeah. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at midnight tonight. So it'd be lovely if you'd come down there. Okay, so once again, karaoke tonight and every Friday at Central Station Bar, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starting at 8.30 and finishing at 12 midnight. Okay. Righto. Here come today's birthdays. Where are we now? There we are. Ah, oh, there she is. Daniela. Danielle, lovely Danielle Buck, is 33 years old today. Happy birthday, Danielle. You're right, darling. She used to come to my karaoke's all the time with her friend. I can't remember what her friend's name is now. Oh, God. It was a, quite an unusual name, wasn't it? That was it. Happy birthday, Danielle. Have a wonderful time. Hope your little baby's all right there, okay? Happy birthday, my love. Don't forget, I always think of you. Uh, Chris Redmond tonight, 33 years old. He used to go to school with my niece. Happy birthday, uh, Chris. Joyce, ah, one of our Manilo ladies. Looks like we made it. Ba -ba, la -da 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 -da. Joyce, happy birthday to Joyce Coriel. Happy birthday, Joyce. Uh, happy birthday to Jazzy Lagab. Happy birthday, Jazzy. Barbara Pierce, happy birthday, Barbara Pierce. Matt Tyler, today is 39 years old. Happy birthday, Matt. Louise Carney, looking good in that picture, Louise, is 41 years old today. So young, dear, young, not like me, old, old, young, old, old, young, old, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Nathan Crowers, Crow Crowthers, Nathan Crowthers, happy birthday to Nathan. Ah, oh, little Hayden Crockett. Ah, oh, little Hayden, how are you, Hayden? Remember that little trip, dear? After, after our night at trade, I shall never forget that moment. Happy birthday to Hayden, okay? Uh, happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday, Jenny Phillips, 32 years old today, and the lovely Martin McGuinness. Happy birthday, Martin McGuinness, who I worked with uh, at Freedom Radio, which was uh, uh, the first um, gay radio station. It was like a, a temporary radio station in London. And that is, oh my gosh, that must be about 12 years ago now. Easy. No, it's got to be more than that. Got to be more than that. Uh, 12, no, must be between 15 and 20 years ago. Is that right, um, Martin? I think so. Anyway, happy birthday to you as well, boys and girls. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays, whatever you are doing today, OK? So I might see you some, some of you at the karaoke tonight. If not, thank you very much for watching and listening. And as I say, once again, thank you those of you that take the time and the trouble to share the show to your walls as well. Enjoy your Friday and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.